Welcome to Fix It Home Improvement, covering projects that every homeowner should know and great products for home and garden. Hi, I'm JC, and this is where we share weekly home improvement tips. I'm here with my co-host, Cindy. Hello, JC. Hi, Cindy. This week, we're going to be talking about concrete patio and sidewalk repair, and we'd like to thank Jake Houston for liking and sharing the podcast. Book 9 is at the editor, and we'll let you know the release date soon. Many ancient Greek and Roman cities had raised sidewalks next to the streets. Pliny the Elder, the Roman historian, wrote about raised sidewalks in Pompeii, and he said stepping stones were placed in the streets so pedestrians could get from one sidewalk to another Hmm. without having to step down into the street, (laughs) because he said the streets were filled with waste from horses, pack animals, pigs, and other animals that were being taken to market. Yuck. And the stepping stones were positioned and spaced so carts and animals could pass over or around them in the street, but pedestrians could jump over them so they didn't have to (laughs) get dirty. Some of the most common problems with concrete sidewalks is a tripping hazard where an edge of a section has raised up, a separation that can cause tripping, cracks, holes, spalling, or a section that is settled. What is spalling? Spalling deterioration where you have pitting and flaking of the surface. Hmm. And depending on your type of concrete patio, cracks and spalling are probably the biggest problems. If you have a patio made up of sections, then you can have problems with an edge lifting and being a tripping hazard. Hmm. The sidewalk to your front door on the side of your home or behind your house is your responsibility. The sidewalk in front of your home by the street is public property in many towns. But depending on your community, you may be responsible for its upkeep and repair. Really? So I would check with your village hall if you have a sidewalk that could possibly be a tripping hazard. You might be liable for any injuries if someone got hurt because of the sidewalk. Hmm. So if you have a sidewalk that's the responsibility of your town, I would take pictures, let them know, and document that you let the village know about it in case of an injury. And if you're in a subdivision with a homeowner's association, find out who's responsible for the sidewalk. Okay. And if you're in a cold climate, you may also be responsible for shoveling snow and removing ice. If you are responsible for the upkeep of your sidewalk and any repairs, it's always good to check if you need a permit for large repairs, like replacing a section, because you're going to be pretty conspicuous when you're doing the work. (laughs) With a jackhammer. (laughs) Holes in concrete sidewalks and patios are pretty easy to fix with concrete patch and a putty knife or trowel. For the sidewalk by the street, if you are responsible for upkeep, check the requirements in your town. I looked at a few areas and found if the hole is anywhere from a half an inch to two inches deep and two to three inches wide, repair is required. Hmm. To fill a hole in concrete with a cement-based concrete patch, you want a solid, clean surface. So you can use a hammer and a masonry chisel, a grinding disc, or a metal brush to remove anything loose, and then clean off any dirt, oil, and grease. Use a detergent or a concrete cleaner and a brush, and rinse it very well. You want that concrete damp when you patch it. You don't want standing water in the hole because it'll weaken the concrete patch, but you want the concrete to have already absorbed some water before Hmm. you patch it, because if the concrete is dry under or around your concrete patch that you're putting into this hole, that concrete will suck the water out of your patch and it'll dry too quickly, making it weaker. Interesting. So the slow... Are these pre-mixed? Well, they'll they'll be pre-mixed with all the additives in it, but you have to add water to it. Hmm. So it's a dry, pre-mixed patch that you add water to and you mix it properly. And you need to make sure that you mix the right ratio of water because you can weaken it if it's if, if it has too much or too little water it'll weaken the patch it just has to be just right yeah, exactly check the label on how deep the patch can be many cement patch formulas will fill a hole or crack up to a quarter inch deep and some products recommend that you use a bonding agent painted on the old concrete before you patch it and what's that A bonding agent, it's almost like a primer for paint. It's going to help your patch stick to the existing concrete. Okay. For a small hole, you can use sand mix. 
and it'll work with holes from a half an inch to two inches deep and wide. For large holes, if they're two inch wide and deep or larger, you can use concrete. So what's the difference? Concrete is going to have aggregate. So concrete is going to have small stones in it where sand mix doesn't. It'll fit into smaller cracks. Okay. Sacrete, it's S-A-K-R-E-T-E, has a product called Fast Setting Concrete Patch. And this is for sidewalks and patios. It'll patch holes and cracks from a quarter inch to two inches. And you just add water to it. You mix it up and put it into the hole or the crack. They recommend their Sacrete Bonder and Fortifier if you're making thin quarter inch repairs. And that's going to help it bond better. Quickrete, it's Q-U-I-K-R-E-T-E. They have a product called Vinyl Concrete Patch. And this is for holes and cracks up to a quarter inch. And all you do is add water and mix it and fill the hole. Sika, it's S-I-K-A. They have a patch called Sika Quick Patch Repair. Mm -hmm. It's a two-part kit. And this is for holes up to three inches deep. It has a liquid and a dry powder separated in a pouch. You roll up this bag, it opens up, it mixes all the chemicals together, you shake it until it's mixed, and then you pour it into the hole. Hmm, it's kind of, kind of <laughs> interesting. And this will fill one square foot by a half inch deep. You should inspect your sidewalks and patios every season and catch small cracks before they get bigger. Why? For, well, especially in areas where it freezes, water can get into these cracks during the day if it warms up, and then at night when it freezes, it expands, and it can make those cracks bigger or start to chip around the edge of the crack. Hmm. And depending on your area, if, if enough water gets in there, you could actually start washing away material underneath your sidewalk or patio, and then it'll start to shift. Bummer. So for very thin cracks on sidewalks and patios, you can use a pourable concrete crack sealer or a concrete caulk crack filler. Many of the thin spiderweb type cracks will develop as the concrete cures and shrinks, and most of these won't get bigger. And by filling these every season, it'll prevent it from getting any larger. Okay. With the pourable products, you can apply it over the crack and let it settle into it. And you can use a putty knife to smooth off any excess. Check it after a couple of days, and you can add more till it's completely flush with the surface. So if you have those spider cracks, mm -hmm. most of the caulk products will be thicker, and it's going to settle less. And these are good for cracks that are just slightly bigger. Sacrete, Quickrete, and Sika all make top-rated caulk for concrete cracks. DAP, it's D-A-P. Sacrete and Quickrete all have pourable crack fillers. For the sidewalks in front of your home, many towns want cracks fixed if they're a half an inch or wider. So for half an inch or smaller cracks, many of the caulk concrete crack repair products are an easy way to fill them. If your crack has some wide and some narrow sections, you can open up the narrow sections with a masonry chisel, an angle grinder with a masonry blade on it, or a circular saw with a masonry blade, hmm. and you're looking to make the crack about a quarter inch wide and a quarter inch deep for the best bond. So you want to clean the crack well to remove any loose debris. Check your product for the depth. If you have areas that the cracks are very deep, you want to fill those with sand or backer rod to around a quarter inch deep. Do you want the concrete wet or dry for these caulk products? I would check the label, but for most of the caulking, you want it clean and dry. Okay. There's a product called Slab from Sashco. It's S-L-A-B for wide cracks. It so you can will... spell Slab and not Sashco? Sashco, S-A-S-H-C-O. <laughs> this will fill a crack up to three inches wide and a half an inch deep. Okay. If you're using a cement-based product and you're opening up the crack using a chisel, you should create an inverted V. That way when you put the patch in, it'll be wedged in place. And with cement-based products, you want to make sure that the concrete is damp before you fill it. Okay. And then check the weather conditions. You don't want any rain in the forecast. But if it's a cloudy day and cool, it's actually better for cement-based products. That 50 to 90 degree Fahrenheit temperature is good for concrete and cement. Okay. Always wear a dust mask when mixing cement-based products. N95 with two straps, goggles, and waterproof gloves. 
Cement can cause chemical burns to your skin, your eyes, and damage your lungs if you breathe it in because of the high pH. Hmm. There's a product called Crack Sticks. It's C-R-A-C-K-S-T-I-X. And this comes in two sizes, half inch and quarter inch diameter. It's a flexible roll of crack filler. You lay it in a crack and then you melt it with a propane torch. Mm. How cool is that? (laughs) So it melts and fills the space, making a watertight seal. And you can cut off small pieces and add it to wider areas in the crack. Or you can double it up where more is needed, and then just melt it in. It's self-leveling, and you need to fill the crack if it's deep with sand or backer rod up to a quarter inch or a half an inch below the surface. Okay. When a section of your sidewalk has lifted up and creates an edge that's above the section next to it, it can become a tripping hazard. And I looked at a few different towns. Some require repair when there's a quarter inch difference in height There were a couple others where it was a half an inch, and a couple of the towns said, ah, just wait till it's three quarters of an inch. (laughs) If you don't want to replace the whole section, you can grind down the edge and make a smooth transition between the panels. So you can rent a hand grinder with a masonry blade, make sure you wear goggles, a dust mask, and hearing protection, and close your windows. Hmm. You can also create a transition with cement products. A recommendation I saw from one city was if there's a half inch rise, you can spread this over six inches. So I would check with my town. Okay. Sacrete has a product called Toppen Bond. It's T-O-P, just the letter N-B-O-N-D. And this can go from a half an inch to a feather edge. They recommend that you clean the concrete very well with a degreaser or a concrete cleaner and make sure there's no loose debris. Where the crack is or where the sections are separated, make sure you're forcing top and bond in there first, and then you're going to use a large trowel going from side to side and fill that area. And you're going to work it up and over the high side and smooth it completely down to the concrete and then pull it down to the lower section and smooth it. So if you have a half inch rise, you're going to be spreading this over six inches. Hmm. And then you're going to go back across it and finish it with a paintbrush or a broom. And that way it's not going to be as slippery. Okay. For sidewalks and patios that have a lot of spalling, you may have to do repairs for safety depending on your town. Or you can just resurface it so it looks better. Some towns require repairs if 25% of a section has spalling. Some I looked at, it was 50%. What causes spalling? In areas by salt water, salt in the rainwater can damage the surface of concrete. In areas with high air pollution, chemicals in the rainwater can also mix with the concrete and damage it. In cold climates, moisture gets absorbed during the day when sunlight or temperatures are melting snow. And then at night when the water freezes, it expands and breaks up or cracks the surface. De-icing chemicals can also damage it in cold climates. You also could just have pitting and flaking because of a bad concrete mix or how they worked the cement when they were finishing it or on the weather conditions when it was poured. So a lot of things. (laughs) Yeah. yeah. (laughs) So if you have spalling on your sidewalks or patio or even your concrete driveway and it just looks bad, rather than replacing it, you can resurface it and it's going to make it look brand new. Hmm. Sacrete has a product called Flow Coat Resurfacer. It's F-L-O-C-O-A-T. And you can apply this from a half an inch down to a feather coat. They say make sure the temperature is above 50 degrees. Clean the concrete thoroughly. They recommend using a 2500 PSI pressure washer. And any cracks that are larger than an eighth of an inch, mix up some of this Flow Coat and trowel it into it. And then dampen the concrete to SSD, What's that? which is surface saturated dry, which means you need to saturate the concrete with water so it won't take any more water, but there's no standing water on top of it. Hmm. You should mix it in five gallon pails using a drill and a mixing paddle and make sure you're mixing the exact amount of water. Use a squeegee and you're going to pull it over the surface of the concrete And don't cover the expansion joints. You want to tape over them or lay rope over them. And make sure you're working in sections where you can finish it in 10 minutes or so. Hmm. Another couple tips is you should cut back the grass and the soil next to the sidewalk or the patio 
so you aren't getting dirt into the resurfacer as you're pulling it across. <laughs> and this is a good project for two people. That way you can keep mixing it and spreading it oh, okay. and working in a team. Quickcrete has a product called Recap Concrete Resurfacer. It's R-E-C-A-P. And this can be applied from a half an inch down to a feather edge. And they say you can add colors to this. Like so you, what kind of colors? So any kind of cement colors. So you can get the so cement. So like gray, color. dark gray, light gray. <laughs> there you go. See? <laughs> they say to clean the surface using a 2500 PSI pressure washer. And they say this step is essential to get a proper bond. Any cracks should be widened, cleaned, and filled with recap concrete resurfacer that's mixed to a trowelable consistency. And make sure you plan your project. Work in 10 by 10 or 12 by 12 areas. Mm -hmm. And then mix it in 5-gallon buckets with a drill and a paddle mixer. Okay. Don't cover expansion joints. What is that? So expansion joints, a lot of pros call it contraction joints because as concrete hardens, it actually contracts, so it will shrink, and you'll get a certain amount of cracks in any concrete. Mm -hmm. And this is more for a driveway or some patios. They'll create sections and either put a rubber piece between the sections or some other material, or like in some patios, they'll cut down into it. So they might cut down a quarter of the depth of the slab when the concrete shrinks it will tend to crack along that cut that they created. Hmm. With the recap resurfacer, they recommend that the concrete is damp before you apply it. Use a squeegee, and your working time is about 20 minutes at 70 degrees, and they recommend applying it only between 50 and 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Hmm. Do you have anything else to add? If you're in a new community, I would find out who's responsible for the upkeep and maintenance of the sidewalks, Check every year for any cracks and fill them before they get worse. For pitted and flaking concrete surfaces, you should check out some of these resurfacing products. You can get a brand new look without having to replace it. You should read the instructions, though, for whatever (laughs) product you're using. Yeah, there's a lot of differences in these products, and it's science. The way these are made, you need to apply it properly or it's not going to last. Right. Let's wrap this up. You can subscribe to our podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, CastBox, Himalaya, or your favorite podcast app. If you enjoyed it, please leave us a review. You can check out our home improvement videos on our YouTube channel, Fix It Home Improvement. And you can subscribe to that as well. You can download our eBooks, Home Improvement Solutions, What Every Homeowner Should Know, Books 1 through 8 on Amazon. This month sometime, Book 9. If you enjoyed it, please leave us a five-star rating and review. You can follow Cindy on Twitter, at Fixit Co-host. You can follow us on Instagram, Fixit Home Improvement. And you can email us at fixitpodcast at gmail.com. Thank you for listening. Talk to you next week.